Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Late last night, Monday night, there was a magnitude 5.7, oh, about 127 miles off the Oregon coast. The second earthquake, a magnitude 3.2, occurred early this morning at about 2.15 a.m. There was no tsunami warning and the 5.7 133 people reported feeling this earthquake. It was reportedly felt as far south as Medford and as far as Seattle and Tacoma, Washington. One thing that's interesting about the Tacoma, Washington area, this is all recent land from a huge mudslide that was created from the eruption of Mount Rainier a long time ago. So something to think about for those in the Tacoma area. Um, if there is a large earthquake, more than likely you would have liquid faction. Uh, the area would have a lot of shaking and the ground would turn to quicksand. So not only would you have a threat of a tsunami and being flooded out, but I just wanted to cover earthquakes here. I'm gonna make this image a little bit bigger for you. Red areas are the high danger of liquefaction, um, the orange or kind of an orangish color, low to moderate, and then over here, like yellow, would be very low. Let me bring this up for you so you can see this. This is all land that used to be water throughout here, but because of past eruptions of Mount Rainier, um, it has built up a, a fairly flat area um, of new land that has since then been developed areas for tsunami threat. Now this is from ResearchGate. Let me bring this down a little bit for you. They have a tsunami evacuation map for Warrington. And we'll bring this down. There's also a map here of evacuation routes for higher ground. And another area, the green zones are outside the hazard area. Yellow, Cascadia Earthquake and Tsunami Evacuation Zones, and Distant Tsunami Evacuation Zones for the Distance of Tsunami from an Earthquake. Um, the height of a tsunami would be equal to uh, the magnitude of an earthquake. Um, probably the largest tsunami uh, would be maybe about 33 feet in height. Now that's what the scientists say for earthquake generated tsunamis. Now that's got nothing to do with, uh, say, a landslide. If there was a landslide, um, yeah, you could have a, a tsunami that could be up to a thousand feet, three thousand feet high, etc. Now in 1958, Lituya Bay, Alaska, they had a earthquake and a huge tsunami that was caused by a rock slide at the head of the bay. In the past 150 years, Latua Bay has had three tsunamis, and their heights uh, were all over 100 feet. 1854, there was a tsunami of 395 feet, and in 1899, a tsunami of 200 feet, and then the one in uh, 1936 was 490 feet high. It's also been suggested that that earthquake, which caused the rockfall, created a tsunami 1,720 feet high that crashed up against the uh, surrounding trees, wiped all the trees out and everything else that was in its path. Now for the state of Oregon tsunami evacuation map they have here, let me bring it down, and the area of threats for a tsunami. And then I found a paper about Crater Lake, Oregon, um, the hazard map from uh, Volcano Lahars mud flows for Crater Lake. And I'll pull this over so you can see. You know, we got Bear Creek, Desert Creek, um, Bybee Creek, Castle Creek, uh, let's go down, Annie Creek, and Sand Creek. And then we have another image here for the Oregon Resilience Plan Earthquake Scenario, simulated Cascadia magnitude 
uh, point zero earthquake and tsunami potential threat. Let me bring this down for you. So using Google Earth, here we got the magnitude 3.2, and I'll bring it out to that other earthquake, which was the magnitude 5.7. Here we got subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate going underneath the uh, North American plate. And here we also have the red line drawn out of the Blanco fracture zone. And we'll bring this out. And down here we have the Mendocino triple junction. Along this area here of Oregon, it's a locked boundary where stress has been building up for the Cascadia subduction zone. And we'll bring this out. That's probably one of the larger earthquakes we've had there since last year. In 2019, August, there was a magnitude 5.9 that USGS downgraded to a 5.4. That was on August 16th, and four people reported feeling that earthquake. That earthquake was caused by the spreading of the fault zone. Here you can see that it actually moved a little bit towards the north. USGS does not have a moment tensor ball for this 5.7. Here in Wikipedia, they show how the Juan de Fuca plate is moving underneath the North American plate and how we have spreading. Here we got the Gorda plate right along the Blanco fracture zone. And if I can pull this up a little bit for you. And another image showing the Blanco Fracture Zone. Most of the earthquakes were probably right along here. Let me pull this over for you for the Blanco Ridge. And then over here we got the Gorda Depression. The principal feature of the eastern portion of the zone is the Blanco Ridge, a 150 kilometer right lateral moving fault that is responsible for the largest earthquakes in the region. Because there was a smaller earthquake afterwards, we might not have anything larger than this 5.7, um, but anything is possible. Any earthquake has a 5% chance of creating a much larger earthquake. So if any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.